So let's take a look at Audacity. This is going to be your lightning tour, everything you need to know to master your audio productions, no matter what you're making. Let's jump in. First things first, let's check our audio setup. You want to make sure your playback device is on the right thing. I've got it on my speakers. My recording device is on the right microphone and I make sure we're on the right space. So let's record. That's one of the first things you might want to do in Audacity. So you see, you just hit the big red record button there and then it's creating a stereo track. So it's recording in stereo here, left and right through my microphone. You can see the indicator here for volume. You want to be hitting about minus 12 generally when you're recording. If you're going any louder than that, like, that's uh, not doing it. Uh, if you get up to minus six or more, you'll start to see the amber and the red. So make sure you're in that kind of minus 12 to minus 18, just to be safe. Once I've stopped recording, I can hit a little back button there to go right back to the start. I can press play and the first thing you to have a to listen. In audacity. So you there we go. And you can also click any point in this timeline at the top here. So that shows you the seconds. That's the timeline of where you are. Click anywhere and there. Track. And that presses play there as well. It's a nice shortcut just to play from here. Left and right. And I just use the space bar there. Space bar also counts as a start and stop too. Quick one for navigating around here. You've got the plus and the minus magnifiers here. So that's zoom out on the minus and zoom in on the plus there. Now let's look at editing. Make sure you have this eye type icon here called the selection tool selected and then click wherever you want to make the edit. So let's say I'm playing through. And the first thing you I find myself a mistake about here. So I click in the blank space between. So wherever it's a flat line, click there and I can hit cut right there. In actual fact, in Audacity, it's called split. So if you go into audio clips and click split, you'll see it right there. Now the sh keyboard shortcut here is really useful. So control and I. So I'll click that here. You'll see the split appears. That's great. And I can select any clip to delete. So if I want to just delete that whole thing, I just click in the bar at the top and I hit the delete button on my keyboard and that gets rid of the whole thing. I'll just bring that back. But more likely, I'm just trying to cut out a few sentences or a phrase or even just a few words or a noise in here. So I click in at the end of it as well, and I click cut there as well, or split. Control I as a shortcut, and then I can delete that one here. So I hit delete. You'll see that ends up with a space here though. So what I can do is if I bring that back, and then all I have to do is drag this back in to fill in the gap and you'll see it snaps there quite nicely. You can adjust the detail a little bit if you need to. You can actually drag on the edges. So if I click on the gap and drag, you'll see that I can actually adjust it like that just to make sure it goes right to where I want it to. And then I can drag them here to fill in the gap there. So that is how you'll go through and you'll cut out the mistakes. You'll find them. You'll be deleting these sections and dragging them in to fill in the gaps. Now, another common editing task is to add in a bit of music or a question or something else into your tracks. So you go to file, import, and audio that lets you import any kind of audio. So I'm just going to bring in a little bit of music here. So I've got a music track here that can be an intro for my podcast or my whatever it is I'm editing here. What I want to do is move all of this over. There's a couple of ways of doing that. One way is that you can drag. So you can drag a square uh, or a whole selection bar over a couple of tracks like that. And that lets you start to move around anything that's under that one. But if you have a whole track that you want to move, you can actually click in the box on the left. So right here on the left selects the whole track and then that lets me move everything along. So I'm going to line that up with when the music fades out. And now I can play the music and the music will fade out and go straight into that voice. One of the first things you might want to do in Audacity. There you go. Now, you might have heard that music is actually pretty loud. So what happens when you want to make something a bit quieter? Well, a couple of ways. You can either select the whole thing and go into Effect, Volume and Amplify. And Amplify lets you either make things louder or quieter. So Amplification 1.1 dB, I'm going to bring that down negative dB. So I could bring that down by, let's say, minus 5 decibels. That'll take a good bit off it. You can preview, lets you listen to that. 
So that gives you an idea and then I can apply and you can see that's got smaller. And the other way is with the envelope tool. So if I select again that track, then click the envelope tool. What I can now do is you see those little arrows that are pointing inwards up and down. You've got these blue lines as well that are to the side of up and down of the actual waveform. And I can click on those blue lines to add a point. And those points I can click. So I've got two now. And that means that I can click the select, the click the second one and actually make a shape here. So you can see that shape whereby I can make it so that it kind of squashes the waveform. So it's full volume all the way up to here, this first point, and then it starts to ramp down and then it's quiet for a little while. So you can start to shape the waveform like that. You can put as many points in as you like. You can bring the volume up and down and up and down whenever you need to. So that is one way to play around with the volume as well. Hey, if you're enjoying this content, please do hit that like and subscribe below so that you get informed whenever we put out new stuff. It'll be all about content creation, audio production, podcasting, hopefully help you with the next thing that you're making. Now, there are three different essential tools that I think it's worth knowing about as well. Uh, you'll probably have heard of a few of them. One is called normalization. So again, this is related to volume. So you see how with the music here, before we messed around with the volume, it filled up that whole space. But this one here, actually, the waveform looks quite small. So what I want to do is I want to select all three of these. So I'm going to zoom out so that I can select the whole thing. In fact, I'm going to select the whole track so that's easiest just to click on the left. And then what I do is I go to Effect, Volume and Normalize. And the job of Normalize is to help this whole thing be evened out in volume. So you get rid of some of the more quiet parts, the more loud parts, bring it all into a more regular volume and you normalize the peak amplitude to minus one here. So that means it's going to bring it up to a standard volume. So even if this is all quite quiet, it's going to bring it up to a standard decent volume. Now I'll click apply on that and you can see how it brings up the volume on the whole thing. So if you're producing a bit of audio, that's generally what you want to do to any bit of audio that you're putting out there to make sure it's at a standard type of volume. The second of our essential tools here is fade. So actually it might be that you really want the start and the end of every clip to fade in and out to an extent because that gives a kind of smooth transition. It doesn't apply to everything. More often than not, you'd want your voice to come in at full volume, but sometimes you will. So if you do that, go to effect, you've got fading, and then you've got fade in and fade out. So I'm gonna do fade in on this one because that's at the very start and you can see it change the shape. So now that's gonna fade in the voice. The first things you might want to do in, there we go, faded it in. And at the end, I can select a part of it. I can change that length by just hovering over the edge of it. And I can again go to edit and this time it is a fade out. So that's the fade tool just to make more smooth transitions between clips. Most often useful for music or sound effects to make sure they fade in and fade out nicely. And the final essential one, probably one that you've been wondering about is noise reduction. So if I select this whole clip, there isn't much noise in this one. I'm lucky enough to be in a good studio here, but let's say there was effect. And if we go down here, we find noise removal and repair, and then we've got noise reduction. What you do is you find a silent part. So we need to get the noise profile first. So what you would do is you would zoom in. You would find a part where it's between the words. So where it should be silent. So let's say that part there, that's a nice little flat bit there. If you do have a lot of noise in your recording, you'll see a bit of jagged squiggles there because that'll be the noise in the background. Go to effect, noise removal, noise reduction get noise profile and that teaches at audacity what the noise in your recording sounds like. Now what you can do is select that whole set of clips, go back to that same tool, noise removal, noise reduction, and then we use the tools here. Now that's quite low at the moment, it's on six, you can bring that up. Let's say we'll put it right in the middle somewhere. Sensitivity, we're gonna turn that up a little bit as well. Frequency smoothing, usually leave that right in the middle, right at six tends to be the right option. But these ones, reduction and sensitivity, you're going to play around with them. What you do is you click OK and then you start to listen. You can see the indicator here and you listen to how it's changed your voice, whether it's made it a lot thinner, whether it's made you sound underwater, how much of the noise it's removed. And you start to play around with those. You can just undo that. Just go to edit, 
and undo noise reduction to go backwards. And then I can go back to my noise reduction and I could play around with it. If it was too much, if it's made me sound too much like I'm underwater, made my voice too thin, I can bring down the noise reduction level. I can bring down the sensitivity. That'll bring back a bit of the noise. But you want to find a balance between the two where your voice doesn't get ruined too much, but it does take out enough of the noise to make a difference. And the final job you generally do is to export. So we're going to export this file. So file, export audio, and then we're going to share it to my computer. So you generally want to ignore the share to cloud. You're going to save the MP3 to your computer, export to computer, decide where you're going to save it, browse, give it a name, probably go with a WAV. If you're going to upload it as a podcast, you'll be uploading as MP3. And in that point, you're going to go for, if it's just voice, medium is totally fine, 145 to 185. If you're going with music, You'll go with standard probably, 170 to 210, generally about right. And then entire project, click export. And that will now create the audio file that is the final result of this edit. Now, one final tip to note here. I've exported that audio file, but if you think you're going to come back and use this edit again, or if you want to stop an edit halfway through and come back to it later, make sure you're saving it as a project, an Audacity project. Now, this is very different. So saving a project... Save to computer, and it's an AUP3, so Audacity project. And you save that, and that doesn't include the audio. That actually just is the edit file. So it'll still, you'll still have your actual audio files elsewhere. This will be the edit file that you're saving, and it's this edit file that you're going to open up again to continue that edit or to go back and change it later. So worth noting that big difference between exporting a new audio file which is the final result of your edit, and the edit file itself, which is the file that contains all the details of what you've edited. And again, that's uh, separate from your source files as well. Worth noting that while Audacity is great for the price, which is free, there are more modern, fully featured, helpful tools out there that make podcasting and audio editing much easier. For example, in Alitu here, you can record by yourself or with a group. It cleans up any audio you upload or record automatically, including noise reduction, leveling, normalization, all that stuff. You can edit super easily, just like this, and you can edit at double speed as well if you choose. And it includes text-based editing, so you can edit just as if you're using a Word document. Music fades are taken care of with just the click of a button, and you can add files to your timeline with just a click as well. And then finally, publish with all your detail in here with the inbuilt hosting, and you can use AI to generate titles and descriptions if you want to. If you want to check it out, go over to alitu.com, that's A-L-I-T-U.com, and you can get a seven-day trial to give it a shot. Hey, so I hope that helped you with your audacity introduction. I've been Colin Gray from thepodcasthost.com. If you do want more of what we do, just pop over to thepodcasthost.com. You get everything related to podcasting and you can subscribe to our show over there as well, Podcraft and the Creator Toolbox. Too many things, too many things. <laughs> but if you do want to pop over there, please do and we'll hopefully see you there. But thanks again for watching this video. Hope you've got a lot from it. There's links to everything I've talked about in this video in the description below. So if you want to follow up with anything, have a look down there. I'll talk to you next time.